winter's night. Snow is gently falling. Darkness surrounds you. And you struggle to see. Everything is obscure. Every direction. Meaningless. But suddenly, light. The night Jesus was born, they tell us that a light appeared in the sky. A light that not even the greatest of astronomers could identify. A light so bright that even darkness had to flee. A light so powerful that even the worst of what we had done was not only exposed, it was cleansed, forgiven, and forgotten. You see, this is why Jesus came to earth, to give us that light, so that we would have the same joy and the same love and the same light everywhere we go. And the best news is, this is a light meant for all. It is freely offered. You see, Christmas is more than the warmth of friends and family, more than nostalgia, the gifts and memories. It is about the greatest gift ever given because a world in darkness has not only seen a great light, no, we have seen the greatest light and his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Christmas is about the greatest gift ever given, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Metrolina Worship at Home. Pastor Dean, great to be with you again this week. Hope that you are having a blessed morning, that uh, you are ready to worship the Lord and ready to sing some great Christmas carols of praise in, in worship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're going to continue our study on the themes of Advent. We're looking at the second Sunday of Advent. It's the Bethlehem candle, and the theme is peace, peace. And so we'll be talking about that this morning. So thank you for joining with me. It's great to be with you again today. So let's go to the Lord in prayer together this morning, and then we will begin to sing two great, great Christmas carols together. So let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to worship, to learn, to grow, uh, to reflect on you to celebrate your uh, promise uh, coming true that Jesus, the greatest gift ever given, the light who shone into the darkness of our souls, Jesus, you came and we worship you today and thank you for that. Uh, we want to bring you honor and glory. We want to share the light, your light with the world. And so today, Lord, we pray that you would speak to us, that you would inspire us, that you would show us how to extend the light of Christ to the dark world around us, that we might offer the peace of God, which is through Christ Jesus our Lord. Teach us that today as we worship, as we sing. Together, we glorify your holy name in the name that is above every name, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Yes, let's worship the Lord as we sing these great Christmas carols together. Sons in 
Yes, amen. Hell, hell, the heaven born Prince of Peace. We come together today to celebrate the King, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. That is our week two theme of Advent as we prepare for the coming of the King, the Lord Jesus Christ. So peace, peace is this uh, week's theme, peace. And I was thinking about how the second Sunday candle of Advent is traditionally called the Bethlehem candle. And so it uh, takes me back. When I combine the, the, the thought of Bethlehem with the theme of peace, I go back to the angel's announcement to the shepherds of Jesus arriving as the, uh, as the, um, as the Prince of Peace. And they say in Luke, the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall be for all people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Peace, peace on earth earth. And we think about how much we need peace on earth. It seems like we are surrounded by the absence of peace everywhere, every place. We need peace. And the scriptures tell us that Jesus came to bring peace. He came to bring peace. In fact, the prophet Isaiah wrote the very famous Christmas-related scripture from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Jesus came to bring peace. Psalm 87. Let's look at this scripture verse. Psalm 87 verses 7 and 8 say, Teach us or show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants. God promises peace to his people. So what is that peace? What is that peace that seems to evade our grasp, that seems to often be nowhere to be found. What is that peace? And I read a what I thought was a powerful description this week of the peace that Jesus came to bring. And let me bring that quote up for you. I want you to think about this for just a moment, where this person defines the peace of Christ as peace is not the absence of pain. Peace is the presence of God. Peace is not the absence of pain. So how do you define peace? I love this quote. I think it's spot on. Peace is not the absence of pain. Peace is the presence of God. The presence of God. So that means, does it not, that no matter If I'm in 
pain, if I have the presence of God, I have peace in the storm. That's a beautiful, beautiful uh, quote. Let's look at another passage from Isaiah chapter 43 as it describes the presence of God which brings peace. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Isn't that peaceful? I mean, that doesn't that just usher in peace to your soul? I have called you by name. You are mine. Oh, what peace. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Peace is not the absence of pain. Peace is the presence of God. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I, God says, the Lord says, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Peace is the presence of God with us. Isn't it wonderful that Isaiah also wrote and then Matthew quoted it again in his gospel in Matthew chapter 1 where he said the virgin, quoting Isaiah, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him, what's his name? They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. Us. So just like hope, as we studied last week, just like hope is a person, so peace is a person. Peace is Jesus. It's the presence of God, Emmanuel, God with us. And to have and to know Jesus is to have and to know peace. Peace through Christ Jesus. Jesus our Lord. So what is this peace that the holy person of Jesus came to be? What does this how how is this peace described and there's three parts of the peace that Jesus brings. The first part is what we can call saving peace. Saving peace. Listen to what Romans 5.1 says. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have been made right, declared uh, <clears throat> innocent by God through faith in Jesus. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Isn't that great news? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1 verses 20 and 22 say this, and through him, through Jesus, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. So Jesus' blood is the peace offering that makes us right with God, that reconciles us with God. Sin has separated us. Jesus has made peace for us. And so Paul goes on to write, this includes you. You, my friend, and me, you were once far away from God. You, you were his enemies. We were his enemies, separated from him by our evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled us. He has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. And as a result, 
He has brought you, listen, here it is again, right? He has brought you into his presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. That's what Jesus does for you. When you put your faith in Jesus, when you come to Christ and surrender your life to Christ, His blood makes you right with God. His blood, His sacrifice on the cross uh, makes you holy before God, makes you blameless before God. You stand before God through Jesus Christ without a single fault. Wow, what great peace peace that Jesus brings. So we have, we have this saving peace Jesus came to give. Saving peace. Peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Peace with God. We also see, secondly, we not only does He provide saving peace, but He also provides inner peace. Inner peace. A peace uh, a peace in the heart, a peace in the soul, a peace in the mind. It's, it's a peace that he gives in pain that we talked about earlier. It's peace even in the midst of the storms of life. Jesus brings peace. He brings an inner peace. Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 9. Let's... Uh, Let's look at that. Philippians chapter 4. God's Word says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. In other words, don't worry, right? Be, in other words, be, be at peace. Be at peace. Don't worry. Be at peace. How? By prayer and petition. With thanksgiving. Present your request to God. Present your burdens to God. Present your worries to God. Present your brokenness to God. Present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. In other words, it defies comprehension. We look at a situation and think, how can I have peace in this? But when I come to Christ, when I trust in Christ, when I take my burdens in the upheavals and the storms of life to God, He gives peace. He is the one who stands up in the rocky boat and says, peace, be still. And the waters become quiet. And the peace of God, which defies understanding, will guard your heart and guard your mind in Christ Jesus. And he goes on to tell how to increase this inner peace. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. In other words... Put your minds on those things instead of the, the problem. Don't focus on the problem. Focus at the, at the peace of, of Christ, at the person of Christ. Not your problems, but the person. Take it to the person. He is the Prince of Peace. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, Paul goes on to say, or seen in me, put it into practice. Put it into practice, these things that we've learned. And the God of peace will be with you. You see, peace is a person. Peace is found in Jesus. Je Jesus would go on to say in John chapter 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be 
afraid. Isn't that a beautiful promise that brings peace? Peace. Jesus promises an inner peace that transcends circumstances. It, it's an inward wellspring of peace that constantly flows from hope and with hope, no matter what the circumstance we face in life. So how do we, how do we access that inner peace? How do we access it? Well, wonderfully, Isaiah tells us that. Uh, when he writes in Isaiah chapter 26, you will keep, listen to this promise, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All whose thoughts, there we go back to that Philippian passage, right? Think about those things that are beautiful and excellent and praiseworthy and noble and pure. Think about those things. God will keep in perfect peace those who trust in Him, those whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. Jesus is our peace. He brings us peace with God. He brings us peace in our hearts, peace in the midst of of the storms. There's a third type of peace that Jesus brings. It's a relational peace. When the angels said peace on earth, he, they described the peace of Christ, saving peace, inner peace, and relational peace. Jesus brings peace with others in our lives. Jesus came to make us, listen, he came to make us peacemaking people with other people. Jesus came to make us peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, Jesus said. The writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, continually pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Continually pursue peace with other people. And let me add, let me add here that if you are pursuing holiness, if you are pursuing a spirit-led and spirit-filled life, you will also pursue peace with other people. You cannot walk closely with Jesus and loosely with others at the same time. It's impossible. The Spirit of God will not allow it to pursue holiness with God produces pursuing peace with others. The two go hand in glove. You cannot separate the two. Jesus came to bring a relational peace. He makes us makers of peace. Proverbs chapter 14, excuse me, chapter 16, verse 7 says, When people's lives please the Lord, even their enemies are at peace with them. Do you see those two go, going together? Talking about us being right with God, pursuing holiness. When we pursue holiness, listen, we'll also have peace with others. That's God's promise. That's what Jesus came to bring. Please the Lord. Jesus came to bring us peace with God. Peace with ourselves in the storms of life. Peace in the heart and peace with others. But listen. Listen, it's a, it's a package deal to lack in any one of these. Saving peace, peace with God, inner peace, peace in the storms, relational peace, peace with others. To lack in any one of those, listen, is to lack in all of those. And it all begins with getting right 
with making peace with God. Making peace with God through Jesus Christ the Lord. You see, peace flows into your soul through faith in Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. He fills our heart and our minds with His abiding presence in the storms of life. And He flows out to others through you as a peacemaker. Jesus came to bring peace. He is that peace. Do you have Him today? Do you know Jesus today? He is indeed the Prince of Peace. And I invite you to invite Him into your heart and into your lives. Receive His peace. Be at peace with God. Be at peace in the storms of life. Be at peace with others through faith in Jesus. Cry out to Him today. Call on the Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Lord, thank You so much for what You came to give. Lord, without You, I would be, I, I would still be an enemy of God. But by Your death on the cross... You made the way for me to be reconciled with God. You came to give me peace, peace, saving peace. And I praise you for that. I don't deserve it. I could never earn it. You offer it as a gift of grace to all who would believe in you. Thank you for offering peace to me, granting me peace. I pray that anyone listening to this today would also reach out and take that gift and open the gift of peace through faith in Jesus today. Help them to do that. And then as they open that gift of peace, they'll find, they'll find that that gift contains another gift of peace, and it's peace in the storms. It's a, it's a peace that defies understanding, that guards our hearts and minds when we trust in the Lord, when we take all of our worries to you, when we don't focus on our problems but on the person of peace. You give peace in the storms of life. And then inside that gift is another gift of peace. It's peace with others. We, Lord, can pursue peace with all people through Jesus. We can truly know peace on earth and goodwill toward men through Jesus Christ our Lord. May we receive peace today through Jesus. In His holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining with me this week. I pray that this week would be filled with the peace of Jesus. God bless and see you next Sunday morning.